Well, it's been a long drive from Detroit, but we made it to Texas. I'm in Georgetown, and tomorrow I'll be working with Nate Funmaker. Nate is a master hatter who's able to make a hat fit any cowboy. I'm curious to find out what kind of machinery he's using and how he got started. A craftsman battles for perfection never willing to give in or walk away. I'm Eric Gorgeous. I build custom motorcycles using skills passed on by countless generations before me. I used to work nine to five, chasing money and titles, and it nearly broke me. So I started over. I decided to work with my hands to feed my soul. Please join me on a quest to uncover the skills that built our society we'll discover what drives the men and women who I call my heroes. We'll learn their craft and maybe even find some inspiration along the way. There's a part of you in everything you create, your legacy, a craftsman's legacy. How did you find your way into making hats? I kind of just stumbled into it. I met an old hat maker and he made me a hat and I really dug what he did and, and I asked him if he'd give me a job. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, how old were you at the time? 28. Yeah? At the time, yeah. And, and up to that point, you, you really didn't know anything about hat making? I really, I didn't, I didn't, which, <laughs> which I, he thought was a good thing. And now if I hire somebody, I think it's a good thing. Too. Really? Yeah. Then you could mold them into like, here's what I, how I want it done. Sure, yeah. sure. Yep. What was it about hat making that sort of attracted you? I get to create something that somebody's gonna wear. Okay. I thought that was cool. So at what point did you sort of decide that you were gonna take over his business or buy his, did you end up buying his business out? I did, I did. did. It was a thing where I, I was um, actually just gonna move on um, with another hatter and then he came in one day and said, so I don't ever want to make hats again. Give me 20 grand. Um, the owner of the bank said he'd loan you the money. We have a little small town bank. And so, we, yeah. He, Seriously? He, wrote, he gave me 20 grand loan. I wrote it off, gave it to the owner and the shop was mine. And that was it? Yeah, that was it. And <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Yeah. So did you grow up uh, in, a, in an environment of, of craftsmen and artists? I or? did. My dad was an artist. Yeah, what did your dad do? He did um, etching on ivory, um, scrimshaw. Scrimshaw? He's what my dad did. That's pretty amazing. How about your mom? You know, she did everything from beadwork to, she had done uh, woodwork, very traditional. And, and we weren't really a traditional family, but you know, when I tell people this often, when it's in your blood, it's in your blood. We're, we're full-blooded Winnebago Indians. So, oh, really? Yeah. So. Did you grow up thinking that you were going to work with your hands or be creative for a living? I think I grew up knowing that I was going to do that, not knowing how or if I said at 52 I'd be in Georgetown, Texas making hats, I'd say, you're crazy. Yeah. But it's been good. It's, it's, been, it's been fun. And 23 plus years later, I still love it. That's um, good. Yeah. And you've sort of been fortunate because you've done hats for quite a few movies and I've been fortunate, um, maybe one of my biggest um, fans, one of my biggest guys, Barry Sonnenfeld, that directed uh, Men in Black. Okay. So I got to make him personal hats. Oh, okay. So through that, I've gotten connections, but it's nothing that I lobby for. I mean, people I say, so did you go to LA or, Cal or Hollywood? And, but, and I don't think I, I'm, I'm not a good ambulance chaser. I'm sort of the same way. I'm not a... Uh a sales kind of guy. The money's not worth the stress. You're right. Because there's enough real stress as it is. Sure. So I think we have over 100 orders right now. So wow. yeah, I'm, I'm, under, I'm under that stress of like, oh, we told this person six months. Oh, we told this person three months. How long does it normally take to make a hat? To, the actual process is like 15 hours. In that time, I could have made, made five hats. I'd rather make one good hat. We have high standards. I guess. I mean, it's your name. I think what shows is I'm a craftsman and, a, and I'm a good craftsman, so, so that shows. You know. What do you think brings somebody into your shop as opposed to a shop to buy a mass produced hat? I think I'm fortunate in this area because a lot of people come in and they say, 
you know, I've bought in custom boots before and I know how long I wait. I know I pay five times more than a stock boot, but I want one custom boot in my life. And I get those customers fortunately here that say the same things. And often when we start talking, it's me saying, well, you just haven't found the right hat for you. And we'll find out what that is. A hat really makes a huge statement about a person. I think that's tr exactly true. When I meet somebody, that's how I take it is like, let's make your hat. And yeah. so often we're sitting on these stools going, okay, well, what's my hat? And then the person goes, I don't know. It's a little bit of discovery. It is discovery. If you execute that right, they come and pick up the hat and they go, this is, this is it. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of questions do you ask them? I look at a complexion. Let's warm your complexion with this color for one. Um, are, are you afraid of, of wearing a hat? Have you ever worn a hat? It's an easy sale when somebody brings in a hat and says, copy this hat. But it's funner when somebody's not had a hat. Yeah. Do the styles change often? The styles change in the color and the crown heights and the brim widths. Yeah. For the first time in many, many years, I'm seeing crowns go higher and brims go smaller. Is there a favorite style that you have? You know, this is a cattleman style hat that I have and, and it's the most common hat. And I love it, but there's so many different hats. Probably the classic Gus, that's a big, people refer to it as a Montana slope. That's my favorite hat to make. Is that the one with the, like sort of a tall? It does, it, have, it has a dome to it and a pencil curl. And I just built one in black and yeah. it came out beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's not, I mean, it's a, it's somebody that has to really carry it well. I, I often tell the person, you gotta stand up a little straighter to be wearing this hat. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun, it's cool. Do you look at yourself as a craftsman or as an artist ever? I think both. And in saying that, I, I don't know, you know what my path is yet again. I keep it simple that this feeds a family and I'm fortunate to do and love to do what I do that pays my bills. And this is fun. This is still fun to me to do it. So what do you think? You about ready to make a hat? I am about ready to make a hat. Yeah. You know, with, with you, we're gonna do that same thing, which is fun again to say, okay, man, what would you wear the hat for? Or where would you wear the hat? This is the fun part. All um, right. The making of the hat, I've done it for 24 years. So that now is the old part to me that I don't, I, I like to do it still, but right. it is, it, it's demanding. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna find out. But I understand you're a craftsman, so you know, you know what it entails. We'll find our way. We'll find our way. All so, right, cool. Yeah. Let's get started, man. Okay, cool. The iconic cowboy hat was invented out of necessity. When Philadelphian John B. Stetson ventured west, he recognized that the working settlers and cowboys needed headgear that was functional for their outdoor lifestyle. Using a felting technique taught to him by his father, he created a wide-brimmed, waterproofed hat called the Boss of the Plains, which was specifically designed to protect the wearer from the rain and harsh sun. Soon, variations of this design were introduced and other hat makers began to make their own contributions to the craft. The popularity of these hats grew when celebrities of the day, such as Buffalo Bill Cody, Calamity Jane, and Will Rogers began wearing them. The cowboy hat status as a cultural icon was cemented. Nate Funmaker has joined the ranks of the great hat makers that came before him by crafting a product that is classic, fashionable, and durable. So you've pulled a couple hats here based on our discussions about what kind of hats I like and what I normally wear? Yes. So what do we got here? This first one is a little bigger brim than we wanted, but I like the flange brim on you. That's kind of today's look, All right. but too big of a brim. So to me, another hat that has a flange brim the crown may be a little low, so we're gonna morph these two styles together. These two here? Yes, right in between the two, and the crown's actually in between the two also. All right, and what about this one? And this is kind of the um, color that we both agreed on, which to me warms your complexion. The shape will be similar to this. This is an urban-y style too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this color. I dig it. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Now, what does this crazy looking machine do? So this is a 1895 measuring device. We've, we've 1895. It was made to fit top hats in Paris, France. And okay. Hatters have been using it for many, many years. This sits on your head like so. 
So go ahead and put her down, Eric. It's perfect. Per perfect. <laughs> and we're going to get a miniature reading of your head size oh, cool. and head shape. And we'll take it off. So That's crazy. That's cool. And we'll take it off. Oh, look at that. So then we've imprinted your miniature of your head size and head oh. shape. And I also will do a cloth tape measurement of, okay. your, of your head size. So this really is a double measurement to kind of help us both agree on the fit. What I want is you ultimately to wear it. For sure. All right, so we have what we need. Now we can go in the back and make yes. it. Yes. Right on. So this looks like a hat already. This is uh, uh, the really roughing of a hat. It is a crown, it is a brim. This is how I receive it from the furrier. It's a beaver rabbit fur mix. This is our dyed color called pecan, and we're now at the blocking station to block it. That's what this machine is? That's what this machine, machine is, yes. And what does that do? What it's gonna help us do is set the crown height okay. and our brim width. Is this crown taller than what we need now? This crown is taller. We're gonna shrink it probably a half an inch. How do we shrink that? Everything okay. here is done with steam and heat. <laughs> so this is a cool looking machine. It's an awesome machine. It's got 40 teeth. We'll, oh, I see. We'll crimp it down. And once we start to steam and we could start to pull it. Oh, I see. As you're pulling that, these teeth are pulling out. Correct. So as it's Correct. stretching this out, it's reducing that crown. We're totally doing that. We could either pull that lever or plunge it. Do you have to put something in there? Yes, we do have to put our hat block in. So let's grab a block, Eric, and let's set her in. This will go in there like so. I mean, we really just kind of set it to our height and then start steaming it. Ah. Uh, yeah. Gets full of steam. The fibers loosen up. Correct. Then you're able to manipulate it. Correct. That is so crazy. Once, once that steam is done, we'll let it sit for a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what happens after that? And we go to our um, plating machine. And what does so that do? So our plating machine will then set the brim. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, let's kick up the steam and let's get going. Get the steam rolling here. It'll start to hit the hat and soften it. We need to go down about a half inch on here. Perfect. <clears throat> We're about there. Let's plunge it, Eric. Go ahead to plunge it a little bit. Crank it down. Good. Good. I like it. So let's hit that lever. So now, feel that body. I mean, it softened it, and now as it dries, it's going to harden up, and we'll get to where we want it to be. I can't believe how flat this is out of that iron. You know, we cured it, so now it's really set. Now we're gonna set the crown. So we're gonna string it up on the block now. Okay. So let's get you going on that. And push then down I'm, on it? Yep, push down on it right on the brake and kind of knead it with your palm. Okay. And let me set the string. I'm not hurting it? You're not hurting it. You can't hurt it. So let me set the string Okay. on here like so. And what does the string do? The string is really setting it in place. So now, Get the runner down, or Eric. And what and do I do with this? Put that right into the string and just kind of work around it like that and get down on it. Good. So now we're to the break. So now by hand, start to work it. Get her set. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Good. And this is getting that the, the hat blank to really tighten up onto the crown. We're perfect. It's perfect now. Oh, wow, yeah. So see how I gripped it? So now we're set to where we're going to cut this like so and then we're gonna set it on the crown iron. So once this comes out of the crown iron, what's next? So next we're gonna work on the band block. And by using the band block, this is gonna start to set your head shape into the hat. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so we'll put this in the hat? Correct, into the hat where the crown and the brim meet. We'll sit okay. right here. And then we'll start to hand iron it. Awesome. It'll set it. So I see we've got this 
this back out from the conformator, right? Correct. So what does this represent? So what we did was we built up our band block okay. to mimic the, the conformer reading. I got you. So if you would, Eric, let's set it in and see what we got as far as, are we close with our fitting? Yep, so line up the band block, the chalk marks, pull it correct, just like that, perfect. Okay. And now we're close, but we're gonna, we got some Couple work gaps. ahead of, yep. So that's why the iron comes in place, because we're gonna really pull that, pull these two spots in. I got you. Um, with the iron. And that's really the difference with your hats, is the fact that you're really building them to fit a particular head to begin with. We are. So now we're just gonna iron it? We're gonna iron it. We got a rag cloth we're gonna use, put it down like so. Okay. So grab the iron, it's super hot. softer on the top. Took it down quite a bit quick. Good? Yeah. I gotta be honest with you. I was blown away that we were using a palm sander with 100 grit sandpaper yeah. on this thing. What was the purpose of doing that though? Really more than anything was uh, giving it a good aesthetic look. Okay. But two, I think when it's a lighter, my philosophy is when it's a lighter weight, the better it is. It looks beautiful. And then we cut the brim and we cut that down to like two and three quarter? Correct, we did. So our next step is what? Our next step is to put in the sheepskin sweatbands, set it in. Um, often this is referred to as seating it. Seating so we're it? seating Look the sweatband, yeah. That's beautiful looking. This looks like a machine that's probably best left for you to handle. I see you don't even have a motor connected to it. No, you we just don't operate even, it by hand. It's totally that. My wrist is motoring. It's good now, it's sewed. So now we're tucking it in. Let's see what we got. Yeah. See All right. We're, see where we're at now. It fits amazing. It's good. It's close. Holy smokes. You know, every step it gets closer and closer, but it's not there yet. Yeah? Yeah. So what is our next step? Our next step now is we're going to put it in the um, vermilion. What's that? Remember we did the conformer. Uh-huh. And what we got was the little, the miniature blueprint of your head shape. And, and we have that here with us. Okay. So with the cloth tape, I went and measured it to make sure we were close. So let me hand this to you and let's see what you get. So like Perfect. that. Perfect. We're close. Oh my We're goodness, very look close. at that. Yes. This will seat in like so. Uh-huh. And then we'll, and then we'll um, heat it up. So we actually leave this in for the next step? It actually sits in the machine while I'm doing it. Very cool. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to it, man. Sounds good. So what are you getting ready to do here? So now we're putting the crown shape into the hat. Really? You do that by hand? You don't use a block? We, we have blocks, some blocks for these, but this is um, 
This is the fun part of shaping it with steam and heat. That is so cool. We steam it and that softens the fur. Uh huh. And it allows you to put the head shape into the hat. I got you. You just work it and manipulate it with your fingers like that. I do. So you have a basic shape in mind before you even get started, right? Yeah. That sort of has like a teardrop shape. It is. We're going to put a semi teardrop into it. So once this is done, then what's next? So once this is done, then we're going to work on the brim. Oh, how's that? So we have an old wooden flange that we're going to use to iron the hat. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So let's see where we are. Nice. It's getting closer. It's yeah. getting better too, right? So I like it. Carrie, this is Eric. Eric, Hi. this is Carrie. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So next we're going to do is to trim. So that's what Carrie does. So she's going to talk with you oh, about all right. that. So we put a little color on this. We do, yes. This is just amazing, isn't it? It is. It came together so fast, but it was a lot of work. I loved it because you worked on it a lot. Well, I appreciate that. That's man. when it's fun because you get to tell people, I made it. Yeah. I think that's always a cool thing. <laughs> that is fun, man. So I'll leave you with Carrie. All and right. we'll figure out the trim work on it. All right, great. Okay, cool. So what are you thinking? Well, depending on the colors that you're wanting to wear it with, you can go with something like this, which is a little more subtle. Okay. That's pretty neat looking. That is, but it's going to limit the colors that you're going to be able to wear the hat with. Oh, okay. And you have something like this, which is a little brighter. Mm-hmm. I like that, too. But again, it'll limit the colors that you're going to wear it with. I'd only be able to wear this with my orange shirts. Right, or browns. <laughs> All right. Um, you have thinner ribbon. Oh, I like the colors. Like thinner that. ribbon makes the crown look taller. Yeah, I'm already 6'5". <laughs> so if we use something like this one here that has the color. Now that is fancy. I like this. I like the colors in it because it's going to give you a little more versatility. Yeah, I can pretty much wear this with all kinds of stuff. And we can always make it a little more casual by putting some leather on it as well. I like that idea So we could too. just wrap this around. I like this a lot. My wardrobe basically consists of blue jeans. That'll so, match just about anything then. That's great. This is awesome. Now, where do we go from here? I'll take this ribbon and make the band, and then um, I will stitch the band onto the hat. Well, since there's sewing involved, I'll just watch. Okay. <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. What do you think? I dig it, man. It looks great. You built it with me. That's always the fun part. Thank you so much. Thank I had you. a great time. I was one of those guys who always wanted to wear a hat, but never thought it would look right. A few years ago, I just went for it, and I'm glad I did. A little confidence is all that was needed. I really appreciated Nate's story about finding his way into becoming a hat maker. He believed in himself and understood that faith and persistence will always prevail.